Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for another Retroid Pocket 2 Plus video. Today I wanted to go over the M64 Plus FZ emulator, which ships with the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. The biggest disappointment for me is when I see other YouTubers or videos online where they're playing these incredible games on the Retroid Pocket 2 or Pocket 2 Plus and I can't get it to run the same as they do. And I've had to play with this emulator quite a bit to get my games running the way I wanted to because I'm not happy with like a 20 frames per second performance. I want a steady 29 to 30. So I've had to play with some of the settings and I wanted to share them with you. First of all, the easiest way to boost your performance is to drop the rendered resolution. So the native resolution on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus is 640 by 480. It's gonna look the best at this resolution, obviously, right? But if you have games like Super Smash Brothers, there's nothing I can do to make it run smoothly at that native resolution. It always drops down to like 15 frames per second if there's a busy scene because of all the movement of the characters and movement of the cameras. So I end up running it at 480 by 360 and it still looks okay. So keep in mind, we're not playing this on like a 32 inch monitor. You're playing this on a little tiny four inch screen that's on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. So dropping the resolution still looks pretty darn good. I keep frame rate top left just so I can keep track of my performance. I also turn off Glide N64 Hybrid Filter, Integer Scaling Texture Filter. When I have it turned off, I don't really notice a big difference or any difference at all with my textures, so I think it's okay. It does say that this can hurt performance, so anything that's going to hurt performance, I want to turn off until I get it to a place that I'm really happy with. Shaders I don't touch, um, Scale Factor of 2 is what it ships with. Now the biggest difference that I found is under profiles. If you go under emulation, there are different emulation settings here. And I don't know the technical differences between each one, but there's obviously differences in quality and speed, whether it's designed for a high-end device or a low-end device and so forth. I've tried all of these settings myself. Personally, I find the Glide 64 fast setting to run the best. I don't see a big compromise in my games, so I think it's okay. Touch screens, I do analog all controls except D-pad, which I believe is stock. And for my controller, you know, I have my own controller settings. So what I do is the slider on the bottom right hand side of the Retroid Pocket 2 controls the C buttons which typically are like the camera buttons as you see in Mario 64. If you think of the N64, there was a middle trigger Z button. I use the bottom triggers of the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus for those. And for the left and right, I use the top left and right trigger buttons on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. S is really straightforward, that's the start button. For the middle analog stick, I actually use the top analog stick in my Pocket 2 Plus. It feels the most natural to me because typically in most N64 games you're going to use the analog middle joystick the most and I love this analog stick so much if I can use this instead of the d-pad at any moment you know I'll take that option and of course the d-pad option is on the bottom left of the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus and if you read up on any of the communities this is a common complaint people don't like the placement of the d-pad because the way your thumb naturally sits on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, it just doesn't really make sense to have the D-pad right there. I do recognize that this is a small device and there's just so many places that they can put this D-pad and there is no real good real estate where they can move this around. I hope that was helpful. Those are the best settings that I've been able to find to run well. If you run it just stock without changing any of the settings, you will be disappointed with the performance which seems really silly because Dreamcast runs so smooth and just effortless, whereas N64, you have to tweak the settings a little bit. And I want to emphasize again, the biggest difference was when I changed the emulation setting to Glide 64 fast. I hope you have a great journey with your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them for you. I know there are superior channels out there, but I'm just showing you my journey and my progress as I go through the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus with my family. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.